today is Saturday, February 23rd, 2013, and I wanted to share this crazy story that happened to me um, a couple days ago. My name is Samantha Futterman. I was born in Busan, Korea on November 19th, 1987. And four months later, I arrived at JFK Airport where apparently all babies don't come from. We had Matt and then we had Andrew and I said, okay, we're gonna adopt the girl. Two years later, we went to Kennedy Airport and di I didn't get the one with the spiky hair. Didn't get the one with the spiky hair. I got the littlest and she was bald, but she was very cute. And yeah, I met my family for the first time, you know, my mom, my dad, and my brothers. And from that day on, these people were my family. Not by blood, obviously. I mean, I look literally nothing like them, but I found my way and made my place known. You had the nightly Titanic sinkings. You used to play the music and stand on your bed and throw your dolls on the floor because that was the water and they were all drowning. I started performing as a kid in my hometown, Verona, New Jersey, and then eventually, after college, I moved to LA to do the whole actor thing. I went to your school weeks ago. They laughed and turned me away. Please, I did not know. I've missed you so much. You know this guy? Why, because I'm Asian? We don't all know each other, you racist mother. Whoa. Oh, wait, I do know this guy. And somehow I ended up doing this crazy, fun YouTube video with my friend Kev Jumba. If you think your junk's gonna get all up in this, you're very, very, very wrong. Yeah, I was just wondering so if you wanted to. please, back off, all right. Fuck it, I'm gonna punch your dick, okay? Done. My Done. dick! We knew you were dramatic. You were such a sweet little girl. So basically on Thursday, February 21st, 2013, it was the premiere of 21 and Over, and I had made plans to go to my friend Lauren's house to get my nails painted. See? And I look on my phone and there's this message from Twitter and it says, hey Sam, my friend Anais sent you a message on Facebook, check it, it might be in your spam folder. So I went on Facebook and I was like, oh, okay, weird. And I didn't see any messages, so I clicked into the friend request. Oh, that's... Wait, that's me, that's a picture of me. Okay, this is strange. So I accepted her friend request. Hey, my name is Anais. I'm French and live in London. About two months ago, my friend was watching one of your videos with Kev Jumba on YouTube and saw you and thought that we looked really similar, like very, really similar. Today, he saw the trailer of 21 and Over and told me he saw you again. I then checked your name on the cast, stopped you a bit, and found out you were born on the 19th of November, 1987. I checked more of your videos, which are hilarious, and then came upon the how it feels to be adopted and discovered you were adopted too. She's also adopted and was born on November 19th in South Korea. So I don't want to be too Lindsay Lohan, but how to put it, I was wondering where were you born? She was born in Busan, but her birth certificate says Seoul, which is exactly what happened to me. Let me know. Don't freak out. Lots of love. Anais. Um. I was at home. I got a text message from Sam saying, a girl just messaged me on Facebook and she looks just like me. And so at first I didn't really think anything of it. I was just kind of like, ha ha ha, that's weird. And then she sent me a picture. And I was like, oh my God. Then she like sent me like WTF or something like that. <laughs> then I asked her, is she adopted too? And she said yes. And then I was like, so the pieces started for Oh my God. And I wrote her, are you okay? Yeah, dude, I like might have a 
twin sister who grew up in France and now lives in London. That's pretty fucking crazy. Um, so I just got home and from an audition and I am about to go online to Facebook um, and then Skype and Skype my potential twin sister, which is really crazy. Are you there? On Skype? Eee. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Oh my god, wait. I'm <laughs> oh, sorry, my connection is really bad. Oh, oh my god, oh my... you're European! Maybe because... <laughs> Hi! Hello. <laughs> this is a really weird experience. <laughs> That's so weird! I don't know where to look. <laughs> Wait, what'd you say? I don't know which uh, little window to look at. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, this is so weird. I like the parent trap. <laughs> Uh, watching the videos of uh, your friend Kev Jamba and you just stopped on that on the video where you where, where we see you uh, punch, him, punch him in the dick <laughs> <laughs> he just took a screenshot and sent it on my Facebook and everybody was liking it but I think people were asking me like what was the video you did on YouTube I'm like no no it's not me what do you mean it's not you I was like no no it's not me <laughs> to contact you and so my friends were like well, we can send her instagram <laughs> so we were trying different ways of attracting your attention i called my dad it was his birthday on thursday and <laughs> i i called him i was like happy birthday and i was like are you sitting down and he was like yeah i'm sitting why what's up i was like dad i'm a twin and he's like what are you talking about you're crazy because i'm stupid like i would do stuff like that like all the time my mom thought it was weird that i was calling that many times like 10 times and she was like what what do you mean do you think she could be your twin and i'm like i think so <laughs> i really want to meet you i like want to meet you like now <laughs> Same, same. I really want to meet you. Just want to hang out somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> I know, right? Because you're like right there, but you're not because you're in London. <laughs> oh my god, I like don't want to go, but I feel good. Yeah, I really need to go to the loo, but like I've been <laughs> I drank so much tea, and I really need to go, but I get my hungry. I'm like, no, I don't want to go. <laughs> oh my god. I'm, I'm super excited. I mean, I'm a little nervous, to be honest. I don't know why. I mean, I've, I guess I know why. It's like a crazy fucking thing that happens. Seriously, how weird would it be, though, if you weren't twins? If we weren't twins? It'd be really weird. It'd be like, I mean, I, I think we're twins, like. So you don't have a doubt in your mind? I don't have a doubt in my mind, but then all these little things put, put that like ounce of doubt, you know? 
<laughs> Hang on, I'll turn it around. That's crazy. That is so fun. That's a lot of lightning. Isn't that weird? <laughs> it blows my mind. Oh, it, it, no, you look so similar. <laughs> <laughs> and freckles. Yeah, she has freckles as well. <laughs> That's Kes. And nice Kemi. And Valentin. Hi. Kelsang and Marie and Jace and Jake. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are already annoying. <laughs> I got in contact with the adoption agency hold, mm. and the last email says. Uh, hi, Anais. I have been examining your record. No Elements is uh, referring to your twin sister. And looking at the birth dates, we can see that they are the same and the same city and a lot of uh, similarities. So it's true that we can ask ourselves why. I can help you in your um, research for your biological parents. We have to contact the government agencies and that could take some time. Do you want to start the research or not? They emailed me something similar the other day because I have to give more information. Can I send the pictures that you sent me of your record to him? Yeah, 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 sure. Okay. Yeah, because when you went to Korea last year, you went to SWS? Yeah, yeah, we went to SWS. That's how I saw my records because I only have the pictures of them. SWS has my records. Oh, really? So they're not even giving it to you? It's quite strange. Yeah, it's weird. Mm. Okay, Samantha, this is my twin study center library, and I've got all these papers I've written about twins, twin relationships, twins' personality, intelligence, and then I'm very proud to say that I have the entire Bobsy Twins collection. Oh my god, that's and, awesome. And this is a whole twin experience. It makes me really wonder how many other pairs are out there. I mean, you would, you would never have found a niece if it hadn't been for the internet. Never, ever. It's amazing. Right. If you turn out to be twins, there's going to be meeting times. It's going to profoundly change your life. In the event that you're not twins, then it's going to probably be a disappointment and a letdown for the two of you. And then you'll have to decide the extent to which you want to continue having a relationship. So I think you just have to be prepared for that. You know, just imagine both scenarios in your head and be prepared for whatever comes. And just, you know, don't let yourself be disappointed if things don't work out. And if things work out, just celebrate it to the hilt. So thank you. Oh, really. My pleasure. My pleasure. <laughs> I don't know. I guess I'm nervous. I don't want to mess it up. I don't want to, like, it's a don't touch it inside of the card, and I was like, oh my god, did I do that? What if we're not twins? I mean, I don't think it's possible that we're not twins. I just kind of weird. <laughs> okay, anyway, I'm hungry. <laughs> Let's have dinner. Okay. Let's do the thingy. Okay. Maybe we can eat in front of... What's that? It's the DNA test, dummy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's have a quick dinner. You guys can stay with us, huh? You'll watch us. 
And uh, or you can just do your own things if you want to. And uh, and then we'll do the test. I want dinner. <laughs> Did you receive the Instagram I sent you the first, like when we were like trying to reach you? No? You didn't? You never saw that? No, I never saw that. Oh wow. Can you read it? Yeah, it says hey Sam, take your Facebook message. Yes, yeah, it was on Instagram. No, no, I never saw that. It was eight weeks ago. Because we thought that if we were just uh, sending you tweets, uh, you might think it's a spam. So Luca had the good idea of saying, if I write like a message, it would be real. Very nice handwriting. I love you. <laughs> Should you leave your uh, computer to rest? She goes brush her teeth and we do the DNA test. Attends, fais voir, c'est quoi ce... Ah non, t'as pas le même. Red wine on it. <laughs> no, she brushed her teeth. I think you go like this. It it seems like it's this big moment in my life that I'm taking a DNA test, but it's not really. It's just like Wednesday, you know. It's just Wednesday, and I just swab my cheek, and I'm sending it to Utah to see if I have a DNA match with a person who lives across the world and grew up. 25 years in France. Okay. 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 Goodbye, fish. Bye, fish. to the house and there are these like dinosaur exhibits like at the museum there and Maria was cooking pasta but she didn't cook it in boiling water she cooked it just in room temperature water garlic and parsley and stuff it tasted good and, and then Annie's came out and she was wearing these like beach pants and I was like waiting for a hug and she didn't give it to me and then we were walking down the street and she was like, no, come here, I gotta tell you something. And as she was walking, she looked less and less like me and she had like curly hair and her face didn't look like mine anymore. And then, and then I woke up. So is Ali still your twin? But in the dream, I don't think that she was.
So it sounds like she's not really in a place where she is able to kind of reconcile these things. Right. They tried to go to the birth clinic where you were born, but it was closed a long time ago. And the doctor has already passed away. So I don't know if you guys are making progress on the DNA test. Yeah, yeah, we were actually just sent it to the lab already. Okay. Yeah, it's, even though it's, there is so little information, it kind of fills in a bit of that gap. But at the same time, your brother has had difficult circumstances and very little support from her you know, immediate community, whether it's you know, her, her social circle or her family. You know, one thing you can do is write a letter. We can send it to them. You, know, you can send along some pictures and things. Kind of, it's like a very non-threatening way of putting yourself out there, um, and they can keep that in your file um, and just let her know that she can access that if she wants. To. Okay, definitely. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Sam. Take care. Okay. Bye. Okay. Bye. Uh. So crazy. It's on ease. Hi, Snail. Um, I have to go to work, like a minute ago, but I have to tell, so the um, adoption agency called me today, and he said that um, they try to reach out to our birth mother, but she, like, says she just denies that she had babies and gave them up. Oh, uh, okay. But, yeah. But he called me today and kind of told me that, okay. which is okay, but, yeah, yeah, I wanted to tell you. Yeah, no, for sure. It's quite, I feel sorry for her, you know, <laughs> like, yeah, and that's all they know, like, about her life and everything. Yeah. Mm. That's what I said, too. I feel bad that she has to, like, hide it. Also, I can't wait to go to Europe and drink a lot of beer. <laughs> and 
eat fish and chips and meat pies. brothers now. It's so cool. I always wanted somebody to hit because I was I'm always hitting my friends and like they're fed up <laughs> What's up? I'm really nervous. <laughs> Do you like cooked carrots? I hate cooked carrots. It's like bleh. I don't like cooked carrots either. Do you like salami? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite. We're a long distance relationship, right? And you Skype someone. But then we see them in person for the like, yeah, first time. It's weird. weird. It's still yeah. weird. Mm -hmm. And I've never even met her, so it's going to be weirder. Surprise! It's so funny that picture from the festival in your jeans. I was wearing the same jeans. So weird. <laughs> same nostrils. Do you think we're identical twins? Yeah. Do you still look upset about it? <laughs> <laughs> I have 345 pounds to last me 10 days in London. Do you think I can do it? We're at the airport right now, at the terminal, and we're gonna get on our plane. There's Ryan, there's Lisa. I can't ever complain about anything again because I'm like the luckiest person in the whole world for all this shit to be happening, you know? You can't like just give up if like hard shit happens to you and like crazy things happen. You just like keep going and see where it takes you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to London Heathrow Airport. The local time here in London is nine minutes past 11 in the morning. Her parents at the train station, and they have to um, stop by their parents' hotel first. And then it's just her and her mom coming here. Um, and Marie and Luca should be on their way now. Oh, I didn't meet them before. Are you on any? Oh, you yeah, guys can't find them that far. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Did you think that? Oh my god! Uh, <laughs> how are you? Good, how are you? Good to meet you. Huh? Is it weird? See you. Yeah. Yeah, really. Two bathrooms over there. I can't wait to the Should I hide somewhere? Sit there. There's no one downstairs. What? There's no one downstairs. Okay. <laughs> Are 
Did you answer the right answer? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they already have it. Hey, look at that. You guys, I feel like my heart's racing and I have to poop. <laughs> Sorry. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> guys filming. Cool, you do. <laughs> Which the Korean one? <laughs> I was really dramatic when I was a kid, and I loved doing plays at school and theater, and I was always wearing costumes as well. I was really, I don't know the word in English, caractériel. I was really moody and I had like anger and management issues. I was a hot tempered kid. <laughs> Sometimes when I was a kid, I felt lonely, but I couldn't explain why. I don't have any brothers or sisters, so I actually don't know how it feels to have someone in your family about the same age. I could not describe it. I would tell my mom, I'm bored. I'm like, I don't know, I'm bored. 
And then she would meet um, one of my friends in the streets and she would say, do you want to come up and play a little bit with Anise? And then they would come and I would be like, I don't want to play. I don't want to see anyone. I just feel lonely, but I don't want to play with anyone. It's not going to help me feel better. So I can't explain that feeling. Maybe it was just missing Sam. It's suddenly if you imagine you are drawing a path and different options in your life, you know, like, so in 50 years, I see myself here and here, or maybe here and here. But Sam, it's like diving into a wormhole and going to a parallel space. It has nothing to do with anything you could have ever imagined. So different. <laughs> It's the only like concrete thing you could have, you know. That, that's Samantha on the right. Yes, yeah, so you pointed to Sam. Sam was playing to an ace. Wow, you fooled me, and I'm pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, are you ready for this information? Yeah. Okay. So, I want you to look at each other, and I want you to give your identical twin sister a hug and a kiss. <laughs> I feel like we knew that. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Did you oh, hear it? No. You guys were not related at all. You it. No. Identical? These girls are identical twins. There is no question about it. DNA does not lie. <laughs> Like, I feel like I'm dressing myself. <laughs> 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 Say something. Jay. 
to do it and then I dropped it after five seconds because I couldn't. Just but I French seamed it so I can't No, no, it's not anything. gonna, it's not, it shouldn't stretch. I can just fold it because this thing folds yeah. and then you can just tack it. Yeah. Dude, my twin is awesome. He's so cool. You guys are so talented. It's really freaking crazy. <laughs> These are like the best. Students at like, the best fashion school. It's really awesome. <laughs> How'd it go? Dagmara, Valeria, F1, Manuela, Tiara. It's almost over. Too many models and garments to organize. You have to run everywhere. Make sure nobody loses anything. Sam was re being really helpful. <laughs> she helped with the shoes and like for the fitting and everything. It's nice. And I really feel like I know her, looking at her facial expressions and the little body movements that are also yours. It's like, I know who she is. I want to spoil her. <laughs> I want to take her now and spoil her. Our families are together. It's so weird. Pop, 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 pop. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, how's my sweetie pie, Dad? Very European, Dad. <laughs> Take me through the loop. 
still do. So you said I never thought of Sam as an adopted sister. It was just a sister. So now same thing with Anais. It's like she's just a, a sister. It's not like an, another adopted sister or somebody else's adopted sister or something like that. It's just she's another part of the family. It's really the same as you. It goes back to that whole nature versus nurture thing and the fact that two people raised completely separately in, you know, very different situations are so similar and are, you know, almost the same person. Sam is one of the most important people, if not the most important person in my life. So now that Anais, you know, even someone not, you know, growing up in our dynamic just fits right in perfectly. She's my new sister. It's awesome. You know, I love it. All the letters sealed in envelopes Today I'll watch all the shoes flow Wait, wait, do you feel this? Do you feel this? Do you feel it? Sitting so low and on my face Don't know if the coaster is safe I smile Or I try She's my favorite sister. Uh, <laughs> this? Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> she goes to I, have, I have American flag best too. Hanging out with Anis for the first time, I found out that she felt that she didn't choose to be adopted. She was kind of thrown into it. For her, it was, it was kind of traumatic, and you know, on the playground, a boy was like, "You don't look like your family, and like you're you were given up because your family didn't love you." And she questioned whether that was true or not. I had never felt that in my life. I didn't, I didn't know that was a thing. I didn't know that was an issue. You know, my family's white, my town is white, but it was never an issue because everyone's really accepting. But for Anais, being adopted was kind of a bad thing. It was like, well, one person didn't love me, and my parents couldn't have kids, so they had to get me. What if they could have kids? What if they wouldn't have had me? Thank you, my Thank grandparents you. and my parents who give me those uh, big uh, tins of uh, duck, and um, I keep them all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Cheers! Cheers! Hi, Mr. Beckham's. So, cross one, anything you want? Yeah. So, one more. I didn't know because you, you, really, you could have just sounded like, oh my god, you know what? What a coincidence! No, I think his first reaction is, I watch too much of YouTube. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, but I do, I do watch a lot of videos, and somehow I just lined up and kept Jumba's video. And I, I don't even know why I was watching that, because I've never ever heard of this guy before. No way. That was the first time I. Literally, the first time I saw it was the first time I took the screenshot. So I saw it, and I saw Sam, and I was like... And I paused the video, and I was like, okay, this is a bit bizarre. I put it on uh, Facebook. And the thing is, it wasn't just me, it was Murray, Chase, Max, it was all of us just freaked out. It was like, you're joking. <laughs> this is <laughs> awesome. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, this is an ace. And then we looked for the video, and the video is about a high school girl. Uh -huh. So f my first reaction was, oh, she's probably much younger. And we just stopped it there. Or well, I stopped it there. I was like, she's probably much yeah. younger. She looks the same, but she's probably 18. For me, it was impossible that she could be my twin. Okay. Because I knew that I didn't have a twin. Because it was written all over my papers that I was an only child. Mm -hmm. So I knew she wasn't my twin. So if she wasn't my twin, she had to be a half sibling. Or yeah, like a sibling. And then I don't want to know. Because, oh, yeah, I don't want to look at it. And not get too excited that something like this. Mm. I think it's funny now too, because like I didn't realize this at first, but like the being adopted is like different for us, because I grew up with brothers and you didn't, and so it's like that feeling like I never had that feeling of being lonely and like you mm -hmm. had such a different experience of being adopted mm -hmm. and like contacting like family and it's such a different experience for us both, because it's like mm -hmm. you didn't have the brothers and sisters, yeah, and I didn't know that, yeah.
I always felt like I was waiting for something to happen. And I felt like I was scared that nothing would happen <laughs> in my life in a way. I was like, Ugh. and I always needed to look for something, like dream, like dream of something. I'm uh, waiting for something to happen, anything. But no, it feels better. <laughs> it feels like it's uh, more comforting. running around together, I feel completely fearless. And I guess I'm scared of losing that. It's just really weird settling back into life now. I have a sister and I really miss her and I really want her to come visit and I can't wait for her to, you know, get a job and I wish so bad that she could get a visa and come and work in the States. That was the craziest trip I'll probably ever go on in my entire life. Now it's over and now it's going from here. The situation's crazy, but I'm living it now and it just feels normal. It just feels like everything's legitimized. It feels like complete. I feel like I've known her my whole life. So it's like, yeah, she's like the brightest, the smartest, like the most handsome girl. <laughs> no, but she's really great. And it's nice. It's, yeah, I don't even know how to describe it. Yeah, no, I really want to be closer to her now, I think. Because we can't go back to each other's life completely now that we've met and shared a lot of things. I just want to keep sharing like things of my life, of my everyday life with her. So yeah, being a part is a bit different. So I really miss her already. <laughs> Okay, 
She looks like me. Yes, I know that, Sam. But, but tired. between the both of you, given your circumstances of being separated at birth, buried in completely different environments, but yet being genetically related, so. Mm. Samantha's was 58 and three quarters, and an ace was 59 and a half. So what's up? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> bed right now and I'm mad because my sister's a jerk and steals all the covers in the middle of the night. <laughs> and, uh, look at her evil face. We contacted Spence Chapin and they tried to contact our mother. And it's actually the second time she's denied having us because I tried to find her when I went to Korea last year. She was saying that she was, we, they had the wrong person, that it wasn't her. She met the birth father through her relative and began to live with him from 1985. They had a two year old daughter and had to support the birth mother's family. Under such circumstances, she conceived the child and was unable to raise the child financially. After all, she referred the child to SWS for adoption for her better future. The birth mother didn't want to say about their birth father. Yeah. It feels like she gave like two completely different stories. Because the information doesn't like match up. Yeah, it was the first thing. <laughs> yeah. Maybe she didn't know that she was pregnant with twins, and then like when they had twins that... Yeah, probably. But why wouldn't they keep both of them? No, oh, one of them. Like, ever he, what people were doing at the time. And like, just giving away one child. It's just strange. Once I got back from London, I met up with this guy, Dan, who was a friend of Kev Jumba's, and he was an adoptee as well, and he told me about this conference in Korea called um, the International Korean Adoptees Association. There's over, like, 600 people going, and from all over the world, all Korean adoptees. <laughs> I had presented very casually to my sister to say, like, oh, maybe we should go to this conference. It's cool, it's cool, we should go, we should go. And she's like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, it'd be cool. And then it's always devil's advocate. Yeah, but if we go, then maybe my parents won't be happy. Or if we go, then uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do about work because I don't have a job yet. I can see on her face what she's feeling. If her cheeks start to get red, I know exactly where that feels on my face if I'm feeling a certain way. So sometimes when she's playing devil's advocate, I'm like, what are you doing? There's something else, there's something missing. Going to Korea after what had just happened about six months before sounded like a very scary trip because we had no idea what we would find there. It feels like a huge, a huge step to take. 
another huge level. Also, I thought we might find some more information about our birth mother. And it's going to be a difficult story to take in and that it might hurt us. Whereas right now, we're so happy. Do you have that expression as well in English? Le meilleur est l'ennemi du bien. The best is the enemy of the, of the good. It's like if you're always trying to make it better, then actually it's a mistake. Because when you have something that makes you happy, then it should be enough already. I think she was scared to face 25 years of this kind of inner burning question, an inner burning shitty feeling. I want to go and I think it'd be great for you and I want you to see the, the positive and the good side about being adopted. And the time is now because this conference isn't in Seoul and Korea for another three years. So I think we should go now. And I was like, shit, am I pushing her into something that she's not ready to do? No, stop, my heart, stop. Uh, we were at the wrong hotel. Hi! You're so short! <laughs> hey, you're wearing heels, you're cheating. <laughs> yeah, no. Oh, I'm so happy to see you. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
There's this really cool um, place, Mount Tripitaka, and it has all of the scriptures, the Buddhist scriptures. It's so beautiful. Like so beautiful and everything, so it makes you proud of being, of like being born in a country with such a history. But this trip to Korea as an adult, I'm really happy to do it with Sam. Maybe before I would have said, oh, maybe it's because I needed to go to Korea to find back my origins and discover whatever. But I think what I was really missing was Sam. <laughs> Sam represents so much more than the rest because we had the same story and we're like blood family. <laughs> Nice to meet you. Hi, nice to meet you. This is Anais. The baby. Oh my gosh. Oh, the huge baby. It's so cute. You were here playing with the yes. toys. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect teddy bear. This is mine. <laughs> Can you maybe explain to me what happens at our birth mother? We tried to contact her and she's denied everything. Yes. Uh -huh. Hopefully in the future, she opens her mind and mm. maybe if she changes her mind, she's going to contact us. Mm. So she has our phone number, so... Do you get this reaction a lot from birth mothers? Sometimes it happens. They just uh, fight. Mm. And I believe your birth mother is just not ready. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I understood too. Mm. Do you possibly know why they would have separated twins or it could have been a mistake even? We don't know. I thought we were really shocked to get to know about this, so mm. we have no idea. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. So this is all from our lawyer, yeah? It's like they were at the airport. Oh, it was March 25th That's that I arrived. When was yours? Yeah, the 5th of March. It's cool, huh? Mm. Oh, your foster mother is here. Oh, she? Yeah. Hi. 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 <laughs> My foster mom, it's funny because life keeps bringing us back together in a way. And I really didn't think that that was a thing. I didn't think it was really possible for me to see her a year later, you know? 
I think the first time I met her, I, I didn't know what to do because I had no idea what to expect. I didn't know anyone who had gone through it before. And that's scary. That's always a really scary thing. And I guess I was trying to tell Anais that as well. I wanted to help her and I wanted her to remove fear of doing it. <laughs> Yeah, I was really touched by and moved by like her action towards you. I just wanted to hug her and thank her for like yeah, taking care of you when we're like nothing but just crying babies <laughs> and unable to feed ourselves. <laughs> and, yeah. You know, she's really part of the family. Bye. Take care. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I didn't realize how big of an event it was. It's really emotional to see everyone together and you feel like you're a part of something. Yeah, and just everyone sharing something in common and connecting with people. It's so cool to be part of something bigger than just us. This year is happy, I think. You know you're going to have a lot of fun for a whole week with people that understand you completely. And to, to know that you're in Korea and that your birth country cares about you as well. Yeah, it's really moving. Yeah, that's amazing.
They're excited, yeah. Yeah. And tell her you're super happy. Uh -huh. Okay, so probably people too. Oh, here it is. Post adoption. Yeah. One, two, three. Isn't that Frank's an adoptee from France, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, that's really cool. It's like a relief almost, yeah. yeah? So cool. Yeah. Are you ready, Paul? Yeah. Cameras, are you ready? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whee! Let's see if there's two people in the room. Hello. 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 <laughs> I, I think you were nice. Yeah. Oh, Oh, good. Oh, par le visage, elle a encore plus ton visage que quand tu étais jeune. Ah, c'est vrai. Yeah, she said she thought you were me because of the shape of the face, because you looked like how I looked when I was a baby. I go, tell me. I comprend why pourquoi separate two. She said if she could have her voice to take care of, she would have loved it. But I don't know if she's in there. I'm sure that you. Hey, good, hey, good. It's really interesting to see how well to be here in the country to understand just to see where you were, where you came from. I feel already good uh, meeting, well, first, like finding my twin sister, then finding my foster mother, finding her foster mother. It feels like a big family. For me, it's a proof of love and people caring. My foster mother to carry me from like the second day I was born. And my birth mother, yeah, if I could meet her, it would make me very happy, of course. I would be happy to know what happened exactly, why. But she doesn't seem like she wants to be, she doesn't seem like she wants to be contacted. I used to say that I wasn't born on the 19th of November. Um, that I was born on the 5th of March when I arrived in France. So for me, there was no life before to me because I was nothing without my parents. And, and yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like, you know, that you're, I was abandoned, and so I started living with my parents. Like, for me, it was like being born, not being born at the airport, but, yeah, just being, you know, when your parents stop loving you, and I just realized, um, yeah, coming to Korea, I think I just realized that people love me a lot. Like a long time before.
people keep asking us, we could have been raised together if we would have. And I, I, I say no. I wouldn't change anything. Because I wouldn't be here, I wouldn't be who I am. And neither would Anais. Anais. I don't know, I, I'm not sure if I believe in fate. And I know that's a funny thing to say after everything that's happened to me. I don't like to think that my life is planned out. Do you know what she bought? Like the seaweed snacks? <laughs> she bought two big things of them. Right, not roasted. Yeah, the roasted seaweed. So she has 30, like 30 packages of roasted what? seaweed. <laughs> but it's comforting to know that life unfolds in a way I'm supposed to, I guess. I have my sister now and I'm happy, so it's not looking back at what happened, it's moving on. Thank you for coming back and finding this time with me. Of I have my parents. I have my foster mom. I have Anais' parents. I have Sue. I have my sister. I have my brothers. Bye, Sue. I have like five different types of moms, and that's okay. And I love each and every one of them. And I love my birth mom, too. I don't know her. And so love her. Family's what you make of it. There's no definition. You should tell her that, like, we're not, like, mad at her. We're, like, here for her. If she wants to talk to us, she mm. can contact us and that, like, we love her. And... Mm. Your names are Samantha Fetterman and Anais Bordier. We grew up our entire lives without knowing about each other. We believe that you are our mother. We are together now, and Abba is a very happy woman. Thank you for giving us the gift of life. And thank you for giving us the chance to have the best lives possible. We would love to speak with you one day. Although we've never met, we love you and thank you for what you have given to us. We're not angry that we are raised apart. We are just happy that we are together now. If you want to contact us, and uh, we are here and willing. And we hope you have a happy life. Thank you, love. Bunnies. Salmon. <laughs> Pop. P.S. Pop. Pop. <laughs>